Welcome back to a new video lecture and in this lecture we discuss about how to analyze a continuous beam using moment distribution method. So now we move on to the today's problem. So here you can note down that a continuous beam is given with the different supports are given mentioned here. So at the support A there is a fixed end and then hinged supports are also given and a free end is also given that is the DE portion. So also not down the loads is also that is 40 kN is acting at a distance of 3 meter from the support A and this 20 kN is acting in between this BC portion and a UDL is also acting with a magnitude of 10 kN per meter and at the free end a 10 kN is acting at the point E. Okay. And EI is constant throughout this beam that is also a condition of this particular question. Okay, so our first initial step is to find out the fixed end moments. That is, you have to fix each part that is A, B, B, C, C, D and D. Likewise. So if you are taking this portion that is 40 kN is acting at a distance of 3 meter and 2 meter from each supports. So it is not acting at the center. So there is a general equation that you have to follow that is minus WAB square by L square if you are taking M of AB. And if you substitute the values, you will get minus 19.2 kN meter. And for if you are considering this M of BA portion, the equation will be W A square B by L square. Here A represents this 3 meter and B represents 2 meter. So if you substitute the value, you will get positive value that is 28.8 kN meter. Then you are going to take the next section that is BC portion the load is acting at the center so there is also a general equation that is minus wl by 8 if you substitute the value you will get minus 10 kN meter and m of cb will be positive that is 10 kN meter itself the magnitude is same then m of cd udl with the magnitude 10 kN per meter is acting so there is also a general equation that is minus wl square by 12 if you substitute you will get minus 7.5 kN meter and M of DC it is going to be positive again. So the magnitude remains same that is 7.5 kN meter and the last value that is M of D okay that's it you can take it as a consider as a cantilever portion or and you can take that 10 multiplied by 2 you will get minus 20 M of D portion. So this is regarding the fixed end moment value for this particular B. Okay, after that you have to consider the, you have to determine the distribution factor value. So, you have to draw this tabular column. The first column represents joint, then member, then stiffness, then summation of stiffness, then distribution factor that is K by sigma K. So, if you are taking the joint B, you can take, it is joint, it is connected with the BA and BC. This joint B is connected with BA and BC and there is a condition that this if you are taking the joint B this is your support A so if you are taking this joint B this support A will be farther end and it is fixed so there is a general equation that is 4 EI by L when the far end is fixed the equation will be for EI by L, if you substitute, you will get 0.8 EI. And if you are considering this BC portion, okay, this BC portion, this is B. Since this C is in between this B and D, in between this or in this continuous B, so you have to consider this also as a fixed end. So again, the equation remains same, that is for EI by L. And it is going to be, uh, for it is going to be EI. And if you add up this value is 1.8 EI and K by K that is 0.8 by 1.8 you will get 0.44 and 1 divided by 1.8 you will get 0.556. Then coming to the joint C, if you are taking joint C, this it is also connected with this is your joint C, this is B and this is D. Okay. So if you are considering this uh, B portion or CB portion, this B is in between this A and C. So you have to consider this B as also fixed end. 
So the far end is going to be fixed. The equation is going to be 4EA by L. That is 4 meter and you will get EA. In the second case, that is a very interesting case, that is CD portion. If you are taking the CD portion, you have to consider this as only far end is hinged only. See, why? The DE portion, there is an overhanging portion is acting only. There is no support. So you have to consider this D support as your hinger. So the equation will change. That is 3EI by L. That is 3EI by 3. You will get EA. When far end is fixed, you will write 4EI by L. When far end is hinged, it is going to be 3EI by L. So if you add up 2EI by 2EI, then if you take EI by 1, that is 1 by 2, that is 0.5, 1 by 2, 0.5. And the last joint that is going to be D, if you are taking D, the C is in between this B and D, you have to consider this as a fixed. So for EI by L, and if you are taking this D portion, it is an overhanging portion, there is no stiffness. So you have, you can write down as 0. So if you add up this 1.33 EI, and the magnitude is going to be unity at this joint DC, and here D portion it is going to be 0. And also note on that, if you, at a particular joint, if you add up the values of this distribution factor, then magnitude will be 1. If you add up any values, any values at any joints, the magnitude of this distribution factor is going to be unity. Now we will move on to the last step that is to draw the moment distribution table. Okay, for that, the first two columns represents the joints and uh, the second represents the members then distribution factors, then the fixed end moments. Likewise, you have to write down. So this joints A, B, C, D and E, you cannot note down. Now after that, the members A, B. Then for this joint B is connected with this B and B, C that you have to note down. Then C is connected with the C, B and the C, D. And D is connected with the D, C and D. And last portion is E, D. And already we determined the distribution factor value. For this A, B, there is no value. And for B and B C, you have to write down the corresponding value. And C B and C D also 0.5, you can note down. And for D C, it is 1 and 0.4 D, it is going to be 0 and E D, there is no value. And the last, uh, the next step that is going to be fixed and moment, that is going to be, uh, that is also be determined. So minus 19.2 and all the values we already determined. Okay. So next. Next always the important step is going to happen that is you have to take from the right side or the hinge support okay the right side of the continuous beam it is given that the hinge support is given okay so you have to start from the right side that is from the hinge support and here you can note down that the value is going to be minus 20. At the joint D, for D it is going to be minus 20 and DC it is going to be 7.5. So if you are going to take the moment, unbalanced moment, what is going to be happen? 7.5 minus 20 it is going to be minus 12.5. So to balance this value, you have to add 12.5, that is plus 12.5 in this Okay, so the 12.5 to be added here. So the value if you add up here, it is going to be 20 and here it is going to be minus 20. This joint D is right now, it is all right. So after that, you have to carry out this 12.5 to the next member, that is CD portion. That is carry over moment for this particular section that is going to be 12.5 by 2 that is going to be 6.25 okay so after that you have to take the unbalanced moment at each joints that is c then b okay if you take here you can note on that 10 minus 7.5 then plus 6.25 okay 10 minus 7.5 plus 6.25 it is going to be 8.75 so 
So the unbalanced moment is going to be 8.75. So for balancing, you have to put the negative sign. And the value is going to be, if you multiply with 0.5, you will get the negative value that is minus 4.38. And here also minus 4.38. Okay. So you have to consider each joint for finding out the unbalanced moment. And then you have to balance it. Then here also you can note down the same procedure you have to take that is 28.88 minus 10 that is going to be 18.8 then you have to multiply with 18.8 is the unbalanced moment so to balance you have to put the negative sign so you will get 18.8 multiplied by 0.44 gives minus 8.35 and if you multiply the value minus 10.45 okay so this is regarding the distribution moment and the rest of the steps will repeat the same procedure okay and uh, while the iterations are going uh, further the accuracy of the moment value also will increase okay so here you can note down that the carryover moment after this step, the distribution moment calculation, you have to carry over this moment to this section. That is, you have to take the half of this portion. That is, minus 8.35 by 2, you will get minus 4.18. Okay. And similarly, you have to transfer this minus 4.38 by 2, you will get minus 2.19. Then, this is again transferring to here, that is minus 5.23. So this is the carryover moment case. Okay. Actually this position portion we already determined that is 20 and minus 20 already this section is completed. So you have to consider up to this portion only. Okay. And the same uh, steps are again going to happen. That is you have to take the joint C is here. You have to take the unbalanced moment and to balance that. And you have that is in this case. The unbalanced moment will be minus 5.23 and to balance you have to take 5.23 okay so to balance this 5.23 then multiply with this 0.5 you will get 2.61 2.61 okay then coming to the here also the same procedure that is 0 minus 2.19 that is unbalanced moment is minus 2.19 to balance is to be positive so 2.19 multiplied by 0.44 you will get this 0.97 and if you multiply 2.19 with this value you will get 1.217 then again carry over moment that is you have to take the half and here also the half the values are going to happen and here also the unbalanced moment you have to take that is 0.61 and to balance it is going to be minus 0.61 the same procedure again repeating here also the distribution moment value is again the same procedure are go going to happen and here also the carryover moment is going to uh, take that is you have to take the half here also half and the distribution moment value is going to be this value occurs that is 0.16 to balance this minus 0.16 you have to multiply with this distribution factor value you will get this values and after that you have to add up all these values okay after that you have to add up all these values from this fixed and moments onwards you have to add up all those values and uh, fill up all those values regarding this a b c and d values and these are the corresponding values means uh, m a b the values it is going to be minus 23.18 and for b a and b c it is going to be 20.91 and minus 20.91 and the law C joined 3.14 and minus 3.14. And for the last to join that is D 20 and minus 20. Okay, and the last one is going to be 0. And this is a, a procedure for finding out the moment, moment distribution method. This carryover moment, distribution moment. Likewise, the procedures will repeat in iteration. As the iterations going further, the accuracy of this moment values also will be increased. Okay. So with the help of this moment value, you can able to find out these reactions and using the reactions, you can draw 
shear force diagram and using this momentum values you can draw the bending momentum diagram also so i hope this section is clear and with this we will end up today's section thank you